Good morning, everybody. Dr. Tyler Foster here. I'm a board-certified anesthesiologist. Today's topic is going to be covering tidal volumes and everything about tidal volumes. Uh, so let's go ahead and begin here. Uh, tidal volumes, annotated V sub T, uh, regards is in regard to your average breath without actually thinking about it. What you and I are breathing without actually trying to breathe. Now you're sitting here watching this YouTube video. Uh, obviously you're breathing, I hope. Uh, do you actually know how big your tidal volume is? No, obviously you don't. You put it in the back of your mind, your brain does the work, your diaphragm contracts, you create a negative pressure, and all of a sudden you breathe. Now how big you breathe is regarded to as your tidal volume. Obviously, we could take massive inspiratory breaths or likewise big expiratory breaths. However, a tidal volume is your normal basal uh, ventilatory effort, the size of the breath. Now, size matters in this. Now, why does size matter? It's because different individuals have different size lungs. I'm a six foot two individual. My lungs are relatively large compared to somebody who might be five foot one. Uh, now, in this situation, a small individual is going to have smaller lungs than I will. Their, uh, their, their tidal volume, their ventilation is going to be less than mine. So in this scenario, uh, the tidal volume does matter regards to how big somebody is. Now, obesity does not play into how big uh, your tidal volume is. So because somebody is obese, it may actually alter your tidal volume if you have a high amount of chest wall adipose tissue, um, then you might actually take smaller breaths just at a higher frequency. So obesity is a situation where we're not talking about size as in obesity, we're talking about size as in height. Now, uh, how big of a breath does somebody take? Well. Uh, pediatrics and adults are different. So on one hand you have pediatrics. Now pediatrics do tend to breathe at a higher tidal volume relative to their body size. So they typically breathe between 8 to 10 milliliters per kilogram. Now this milliliters per kilogram is the is the uh, unit of measure that we use for tidal volumes. Now, another alternate way to say this is cc divided by kilogram cubic centimeters, milliliters, these are exact same. Uh, some of the older terminology regards to cubic centimeters. Newer technology uh, does tend to focus on milliliters per kilogram. Now, weight is measured in kilos, not pounds. So if you do have a patient that's 200 pounds, it does need to be converted into kilograms because this is gonna be your standard unit of measure. Now, in an adult, they do take smaller tidal volumes given their body size. So in an adult, a typically accepted standard is six to eight milliliters per kilogram. Now, what that means is if you have an individual who is 70 kilograms, and you're trying to figure out what you want to set their ventilator to, uh, if you have a 70 kilo individual, maybe let's take six or eight, let's split the difference, let's say seven, just because it's between six and eight. So 70 kilograms times seven mils per kilo is equal to 490 milliliters because the unit of measure kilograms cancel out um, and you're left with 490 milliliters. This would be an acceptable tidal volume for an individual whose ideal predicted body weight is 70 kilos. Now, in, an, in a pediatric individual, their tidal volumes are going to be set a little bit higher. So if you do have a, a neonate uh, or an individual who's uh, one and a half, two years old, they come in with an RSV infection, three years old with an RSV infection, uh, you might be setting their uh, tidal volumes if they do need ventilated at a higher tidal volume. So this is, this is a very standard uh, accepted unit. Now sometimes I do see it on the smaller end, four to eight. Older, older um, principles, usually from decades ago, did tend to lead to higher tidal volumes. This tended to lead to barrow and volume trauma. Uh, barrow trauma is too high of pressures causing alveolar damage, and volume trauma is too high of volumes causing alveolar stretch and damage. Uh, and this could lead to capillary uh, uh, type one pneumocyte leak syndromes, um, 
any type of interstitial disease, some pulmonary edema. So typically nowadays we do tend to, to limit it to about eight mils per kilo. Now, if you're sitting there watching this video, follow along with me, take a deep breath. If you took a big deep breath, I bet you took well over a liter of, of breath size. Maybe some people even took a two liter breath size. That's big. Now, a one time maximal effort or a vital capacity breath is not gonna rupture a lung, is not gonna rupture your alveoli. However, repeated large breaths can cause some issues. So just because you took a deep breath with me, you and I are gonna be fine. However, on an individual on a ventilator who might be there for, I don't know, three plus weeks, now that's a big deal. Uh, so obviously we do want to minimize our, our breath size to an individual based on their size. So how do you figure this out? How do you figure out what is their uh, ideal body weight or their predicted uh, body weight based on their size? Obviously obesity is a big issue. It's worldwide, some countries more so than others. Now. Uh, you can get on Google, that's what I recommend. Uh, on a daily practice, I have charts that I use. You can find those charts with a quick Google search. So uh, I am gonna show you something here. Uh, this is going to be a uh, NIH predicted body, uh, let me figure out here, uh, predicted body weight to tidal volume chart. Now how you interpret this, males and females are interpreted differently. So if you do have a female, refer to this side, and if you have a male, refer to this side. Now, if you look over on the left-hand columns here, so over here and over here. Now, if you do look there, and I'll get rid of those. Um, if you do look there, uh, there's height. Now, this is a American uh, chart that shows feet. There are some charts that show meters, kind of depends on your unit of measure. Uh, I do live in the US, so we do refer to patients based on their feet. Uh, in a smaller individual, somebody who's four foot 10, uh, it would be different than somebody who's six foot tall. This is two meters. This is less than two meters for those who don't understand what feet are, feet and inches. Uh, so this is a two meter person, and this is somebody who's uh, 1.7 meters, somewhere in that range. Uh, you look and you find their predicted body weight. And the predicted body weight shows what they should be based on their height. So for me, for example, as a six foot two individual, my predicted body weight would be 82 kilos. Now, uh, unfortunately, I do like to eat a little more than I should, so I'm uh, slightly higher than uh, 82 kilograms. Not a lot, but, but a little. Uh, but this would be my predicted body weight. Just because I'm obese, just because I'm overweight, just because I weigh more than my predicted body weight, doesn't mean my lungs scale up and are bigger. No, actually, uh, on the flip side, my lungs are, are pretty much the same or maybe even a little shrunken because uh, of the obesity. So uh, now you look over here at four, five, six, seven, eight. This is gonna be your mils per kilo of tidal volume. So if you have a six foot two individual, if I end up in the intensive care unit and you are responsible for dialing up a tidal volume on your ventilator for me, I want you to go over to the chart here and I want you to find the uh, six mils per kilo, maybe seven mils per kilo, maybe eight, somewhere in this range. All of these are going to be acceptable. I tend to stick in the middle, so usually at about six mils per kilo, maybe seven, I would dial my ventilator to 490 or 580. So somewhere in that range, mils for my tidal volume. Now, females on the other side, uh, you, can, you can use this as a predictive chart. Now, is it the end of the world if you err a little on the high side or a little on the low side? No, it's not, because we have arterial blood gases, also known as ABGs, and ABGs are what are gonna ultimately guide us for ventilator management. This is a great chart though to start. If you have an individual who you've never met before, they arrived to the ICU and you have to figure out how big of tidal volume you initially set, this is a great chart for the initial sake. However, uh, if they have pathology going on, if they have other issues, uh, or if you get a blood gas that shows you're way off, you might have to alter the tidal volume as well as the respiratory rate, the oxygen, a whole bunch of different parameters. This talk is specifically for tidal volume. Uh, hopefully that you found this useful. If you have any questions, please comment below. Uh, I'm gonna try and be a little more active on social media. I'm gonna try and be a little more active on the YouTube channel. So uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks.